I can't wait to tell you about this story now. You might have been wondering whatever happened to these kids. A sergeant with the Volusia County, Florida Sheriff's Office is now talking about a shootout this summer that gained national, perhaps international attention. Donnie Maxwell had to hide behind a tree as bullets from an AK-47 whizzed by. But what's really shocking is the age of the suspects. A 14-year-old girl was handling that AK-47. A 12-year-old boy had a pistol. They were dubbed by law enforcement as Bonnie and Clyde. The two had escaped from a foster home and didn't want to go back. Sergeant Maxwell shared his story last night with Leland Vittert, host of On Balance, and Leland's here now. I remember us reporting on this story, Leland, and it could have turned out so much differently than it did, right? Incredibly different, both for the deputies, a number of whom were hiding out for about 45 minutes behind the trees that you see in that body cam footage because they were taking rounds with AK-47s and shotguns. And obviously it could have turned out very different for the children uh, who were firing at deputies. Uh, the people that I, the deputies that I talked to and the sheriff I talked to last night made the point that the kids who escaped from this group home thought that it was something like Grand Theft Auto. And they actually talked like that once they'd been captured. They said, we thought we were going to roll like Grand Theft Auto. They were in a video game. Uh, clearly, based on what was happening, it was incredibly real. We spent about 20 minutes last night with the sergeant and with the sheriff as well talking. And if you listen to this body cam footage and the radio calls, which have now been released, you get this sense of this overwhelming calmness uh, it, the, you're hearing him talk about being shot at by AK-47s, and there's a 14-year-old with a shotgun, and she's moving here and she's moving there. And it sounds like Sergeant William Maxwell is ordering Chick-fil-A at a drive through He's so calm. There's literally ice running through his veins. Take a listen to how he describes those moments. We at the Sheriff's Office, we focus on the preservation of life. And we know we have a certain job that we have to do every day. And Hopefully we'll come home that night, but sometimes it doesn't happen that way. And we wanted to ensure that no matter what, that all the deputies went home safe, the juveniles went home safe, and also the general public didn't get into a situation where they were in harm as well. And that's what's really incredible about this is that for those 45 minutes, Adrian, they kept taking round after round after round before they were able to bring it to a conclusion. I remember when we first reported on this story, and these children were, had some involvement in crime before. I mean, at least one of them had had arson charges against them or something, trying to burn a place down. Do we know anything that happened to these two kids? And that's really the next part of the story. And the sheriff was very outspoken about this, how the juvenile justice system in Florida is totally broken and allowed these kids who had serious issues. The 14-year-old girl doesn't have a mom. The 12-year-old son boy is a product of foster care and essentially that they'd been just bounced around and became more and more and more delinquent, but allowed to be in these group homes where they could escape and beat people up and, and the like. Uh, and I think it's one of the reasons, as the sergeant explained, that they finally decided that they had to start firing back at these kids. Take a listen. Yes. Um, there was one time like was on the video where she had the shotgun to the door, and I was concerned that our entry team that was going in um, were going to be engaged by that, and that would be a very bad situation to encounter. Um, the next thing that led after that moment, they uh, moved over to the garage area, which went out of my view. And at that point in time, I knew they were going to probably engage our deputies outside waiting to try to de-escalate the situation. And now that these kids finally had done something so bad, unlike the arson charges you talked about, Adrian, and some of the other more sort of juvenile delinquent and vandalism charges they had against them, they're still in custody behind bars awaiting charges on attempted murder. Oh, my goodness. Well, what a life. And, and thank goodness for those sheriff's deputies. It sounds like they had everything under control despite impossible, uh, an impossible situation. Thank you, Leland. You can find more of Leland's conversation with Sergeant Maxwell on NewsNationNow.com.